Hello and welcome back, my dear learners. I am Rodney Giberson V. Garcia, Teacher 3 from Ujawan National High School, your teacher for this course. Today, we shall cover Module 2, Lesson 2, which talks on the importance of quantitative research. But before that, let's try to recall the lesson that we previously learned. So, quantitative research is a systematic process of generating empirical or data-driven knowledge using quantitative methods like your statistics. So we also learned that there are different kinds of quantitative research and we tried, to, to, we tried our best to explain the four basic types of quantitative research. I hope you remember them. We have your descriptive research which focuses on the what or the general characteristic of a certain population. Second is your correlational research which tries to establish or see or seek relationship of two or more variables. Third is your causal comparative also known as your ex post facto research which looks into the cause and effect relationship of two or more variables without randomly grouping them and without manipulating any variables. The fourth kind is the experimental research, which introduces a treatment variable to a population, and it tries to see if there is a cause and effect relationship uh, between two or more variables. And we ra randomly group them into two, the control variable and the experiment, the control group, I should say, and the experimental group. So we also said that Quantitative research has several applications across different fields. And with the emphasis in the third one, our goal now is to determine the importance of quantitative research across the different fields. And we also have another goal, which is to use credible sources in, in finding information pertaining to the applications of quantitative research. So. We already know that quantitative methods are used across different disciplines. It allows academicians and practi practitioners to produce knowledge and come up with solutions to existing societal problems. So one way of producing solutions to a certain problem is the use of quantitative methods. We can see that in uh, politics, in governance, in medicine, in education, in businesses, in the fields of uh, psychology, in the fields of anthropology, and across different disciplines. We said in the previous video that we are living in a world full of quantitative research. The things that you see around us, the things that uh, you buy, those are products of quantitative research. So to better illustrate how quantitative research uh, influences us in our everyday life, we'll try to see the different fields and uh, discuss the applications of quantitative research. The first field that we are going to talk today is on politics and governance. So in politics and governance, quantitative research is applied by gathering information such as political surveys. So we all know that uh, the election is fast approaching and Research entities like the SWS or Social Weather Station tries to, or tries to survey people regarding their attitudes towards a certain candidate. So that's one application of quantitative research. Before we proceed, I'd like to remind everyone who is using social media to share information uh, about uh, politics that we need to be careful uh, in sharing information. We have to first see if the information uses credible sources and not just a page on Facebook, not just a not just on mere hearsay. So we all know that fake news and fake uh, and misinformation is already rampant in Facebook alone, in any social media alone, and we have we need to try our best to do our readings. So there is no other vaccine for ignorance other than reading. So please read first before you click, before you share. So moving on, in politics and governance, 
quantitative research can be applied by analyzing population through census. So last year, 2020, there is a census conducted and the data generated from the census allows the government to determine the impact of their government programs. The data also inform the government on the, uh, the problems that need to be addressed, the government programs that need to be conducted to better have, uh, to better uh, address these problems. The next is business and economics. In businesses, quantitative methods are often applied. Businesses often collect and analyze consumers' behavior to better inform on what product to develop, on what product to improve, and what services are needed to better boost their sales. So one application of this uh, is the kind of advertisement that we often see. I think you already saw the advertisement of Sarsi, Chocomani, and Nips. So these advertis advertisements are frankly weird, but it somehow appeals to the consumer because they have positive perception towards it. So the reason why that kind of advertisement is often copied by other uh, products is because the consumers often find that very appealing. And that's one application of quantitative research. These businesses collected our behavior towards, towards that adver advertisement and uh, that's, that would feed back their uh, product and the advertisement. Aside from that, quantitative methods are used in e economics. In economics, we have our, uh, our GNP and GNI or GDP and GNI the gross domestic product and gross national income. These are indicative of how our economy performs. And one way of determining the GDP and GNI is the use of quantitative methods, looking at the value of our uh, demand and uh, supply. The next is environment and developmental studies. So environment and developmental studies often employ quantitative methods. They are used in studying environmental issues such as deforestation, uh, pollution, and the like. So they only not analyze the environmental issues, but the use of quantitative methods also provide solutions to these problems. Aside from this, quantitative methods are used in developmental studies to develop a product, to develop a model, or to develop a program that can better help us humans perform. Quantitative methods are also useful in the fields of education, sociology, and psychology. We all know that quantitative methods are useful in educational assessment. Do you know the reason why we often give you quizzes and tests? That's because we are getting numbers from you. Numbers or data that would help us if we need to proceed to the next lesson or we need to give you another kind of intervention or we need to better uh, improve our approaches. So that's one way of informing us with the use of quantitative methods, the use of tests and quizzes. Aside from educational assessment, uh, quantitative methods are often applied in measuring the behavior of a person or a group. So before employment, the Human Research Division or HR would often give you tests on your emotional quotient or your EQ, your IQ or intelligence quotient, and also your uh, behavior to help us better explain how quantitative research is used across different fields. Let's try to answer exercise one. So the direction reads, Explain the importance of quantitative research across fields, five points each. So for this uh, activity, you're only allowed to pick five or you're only allowed to pick two to three fields and you're allowed also to search the internet. But please, when searching for sources, please try to look if the or try to evaluate if the source is credible or not. 
Also, please avoid copying answers from the internet. Try your best to paraphrase. You learn your paraphrasing techniques in academic writing in your grade 11. So, let's try to answer number one. How is quantitative research important in the field of anthropology? We all know that anthropology is the study of humanity, whether it be on the linguistic side, cultural side, biological side. So, how is quantitative research useful in the field of anthropology? So, quantitative methods are applied in the sense that uh, we try to understand the behavior of humans, we try our best to uh, understand the characteristic of a certain group. That's one way of using quantitative research in the field of anthropology. So that's one field done. The rest is up to you. So I hope you use credible sources and I hope you paraphrase your answers. So in summary, research in general helps us better understand our society by producing knowledge and product that can guide us. So with that, I hope our appreciation in quantitative research is boosted because everything that we see at, around and everything that we, uh, that we have now is the product of research. And I hope that one day you'll be able to contribute to humanity by delving into quantitative research. So for our assignment, uh, please begin looking for interesting topics to be researched. I'd like to reiterate what I said in the previous video lesson that our end product for this course is a full paper from chapter 1 to chapter 5. So please, every minute counts, begin looking for interesting topics to be researched. Once you have your topics or problems to be researched already, please don't hesitate to contact me. So these are my references, and here are some further readings. For a quotation that will help you guide, us, that will help you guide yourself in quantitative research, uh, this is from Zora Neal Hurston, and he said that research is formalized curiosity. It is poking and prying with a purpose. So, I hope that guides you in looking for an interesting topic. And with that, I hope you learn a lot. Once again, this is Rodney Giverson V. Garcia, Teacher 3 from Ojawan National High School. If you feel the need to contact me, please look me up at my Facebook page, Rodney Garcia, and at my email account, rodneygiverson.garcia at depet.gov.ph, and in my YouTube channel, Teacher Rod. So please like this video and please subscribe to my channel for, my, for more educational vids. So thank you and see you next week for another video lesson only here in my YouTube channel. See you and goodbye.